Well, I, I guess you might ask yourself, well, what can I do to help? Um, if you have migraine, uh, we would be particularly uh, interested in uh, hearing from you. We're going to be doing uh, several campus visits uh, over the coming months uh, that allow us to go uh, to the place where a lot of young people are and hope that a lot of those young people, and at least uh, from incident studies, we know that a lot of young people do suffer from migraine. In fact, it most commonly appears uh, in the teens and twenties. So we'll do these campus visits in, hoping, in the hope that people will be generous enough to come out uh, answer some questions about their headaches, and perhaps give us a saliva sample because uh, you can get the DNA just from a, a simple uh, saliva sample. You might ask yourself, well, I have headaches, but how do I know whether they're migraine or not? Well, the International Headache Society has a very detailed list of criteria you have to meet, but uh, the sort of common sense uh, uh, approach uh, would tell you that if you've had recurrent headaches in your life, and if you've had five attacks in which uh, the headache is of at least moderate to severe intensity, uh, that means that it impairs your ability to function normally. Uh, and that these attacks, if you didn't take any medicine or didn't treat them, lasted at least four hours. Um, and if the headache was accompanied by either nausea or light and sound sensitivity, meaning that you want to be in a dark, quiet room, um, then you probably have migraine. If you're so inclined, um, we would love uh, for you to come out and participate. It's a very easy thing to do. Uh, what it will involve will be going through a, a consent form to allow us to obtain uh, your saliva sample uh, and know what the study is about, uh, filling out a, a detailed questionnaire uh, on what your headaches are like, um, and then providing uh, uh, about five milliliters uh, of your saliva. What we plan to do is to gather a large number of people who have migraine and then compare their whole genome uh, to the genomes of people who've never ever had a migraine in their life to look for the differences. That's sort of the first step to see um, if we can find the areas on the genome that are consistently different. Now that will lead us to a lot of false positives, uh, but we'll continue to look until we find those that uh, do indeed seem to render susceptibility to the disorder. Now the problem with migraine is it's so common and so complex that each individual person may not have exactly the same cause, biological cause, as someone who also has migraine whose headaches look very similar. Uh, so we're, one, of the, one of our goals is to begin to divide up this large 38 million person pie into groups of people whose migraine is caused by the same thing. We're hoping that when we come up with more homogenous or uniform uh, populations of migraine uh, sufferers, uh, that they will then respond to the same type of treatment. And it will free us from this sort of random uh, process of trying one drug after another, many of which are expensive, many of which don't work, and most all of them which have a lot of side effects. Our hope is, is that if we can identify the actual biological cause, that we might be able to predict the effect of treatment at the first visit, and in the future even to develop treatments that are based on the biology that have very few side effects.